we're all imperfect. And on this podcast, I'll be chatting with a variety of interesting people who are willing to make themselves vulnerable by sharing their own struggles and imperfections. It's hard to make changes and look at stuff, you know, and you don't want to do it. You want to stay in the whirlpool because it makes everybody happy. I'm Hugh Van Kylenberg from The Resilience Project. And I'm Ryan Shelton from My Mum. And I'm Josh from Hugh's Mum. And this is The Imperfects. Before we start, Mm. I've got a bit of a fun one for you guys. Got a bit of a fun one? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. There's one thing I love, it's having fun. (laughs) A bit of a fun one. Okay, yeah. Okay. A story, an anecdote. Yeah, it happened very recently. Piece of content. (laughs) (laughs) Go on. So, do you know I've got a friend called Kevin? Do you know I've got a friend called Kevin? A friend called Kevin? Yeah. Mm. Uh, This sounds like a setup to a joke. No, that's just... Oh, that isn't the fun one that I've yeah. got a friend called Kevin. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, yeah. Is, You've got a friend called Kevin, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. 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 great. Yeah. You know Kevin. Yeah, you run with him. Yeah, I run with him. Oh, yes, yeah. I've met him. Yes, yeah. once at our favourite Cafe Terra Twilight. Yes. I introduced you to, and then when you left, he got so down on himself and he went, oh, I don't know why, I just tried to play it so cool then. I love Ryan. I should have told him how much I love him, but I just played it way too cool. Right. Mm. Do you remember that? I remember you telling me that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, here's the fun bit. Uh, <laughs> it's actually not that fun. That, that last bit was pretty fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just recounting that story about how much Kevin likes me. That's fun. Uh, I'm having fun. <laughs> so, Ke- so Kevin's my running coach and running friend. And anyway, I called. I went to call him um, the other night. I went to call him a couple of nights ago, mm. and it was late. It was probably about quarter past ten, and I can't remember why. But I was in the car, and I called him. And it went past two or three rings. And when it goes past two or three rings, you kind of yeah. not going to answer, especially yeah. that time. Yeah. But for some reason, I was in the car. I just didn't have it kept ringing. And all of a sudden, he answered. He didn't say anything. I could just hear him just kind of doing stuff, but mm. he didn't say anything. And mm. so I said, hello. And then it was absolute silence. And then he just kept doing what he was doing. And then I went, hello. And then again, just absolute silence. And I went, uh, Kevin. And then Kevin goes, um, Yes. <laughs> Turns out Kevin was listening to an episode of The Imperfects <laughs> <laughs> while he was cleaning. <laughs> while he was cleaning. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was mid sentence. And somehow with his Bluetooth headphones on, he accidentally answered the phone, not knowing I'd rung. So I was mid sentence. And then for oh. what he heard was me stopping and just going, Hello? <laughs> wow. Hello? And then there was another pause and he said, I was confused. Like, what's happening? And then I went, Kevin? And, that, he, and, he, and, went, he, and he went, yes. Get back <laughs> like to he, the thought, podcast. he thought I was actually going to communicate to him oh through the podcast. Oh, my God. I mean, that probably is the future of podcasts where the somehow the phone will know who you are and you'll be, they'll be able to like put your name mm. into the episodes. Yeah. Well, that was a little taste of the future. For- yeah. You Not know this- what, Hugh? That was a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly framed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun one. It was a fun one. Yeah, I like that. Kevin's a fun guy as well. Like yeah. He's a fun guy. He's a fast guy. I call him Fast Kevin. Oh, right, because he's yeah. fast and his name's Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Good name. <laughs> a fun nickname. Uh, well, being our first episode, it was like, well, we have, to, we have to deliver here and find someone who everyone is going to just love mm-hmm. and who better than Chrissy Swan. Mm. Chrissy Swan. A friend of yours. I know Chrissy. I know Chrissy. I've known her for a few years off and on. And and um, she's just always... like I, I mean, I used to watch Big Brother. So Chrissy, for those who don't know, Chrissy was originally on Big Brother. That's how she became known to everyone. And this is like 20 years ago. This mm. is like the th- I think she says in the episode, the third season maybe of mm. Big Brother. And, and so I loved her on Big Brother. And then she started doing radio and... And, and sort of became friends with her. But whenever I would put out videos or do things, she would always comment on them and be very, very supportive of like little mm. things I was doing that were just utter just madness and silliness. But she would just be so supportive and just joyful around it. And uh, and I've always really, because not everyone does that. And I was just always very appreciative of mm. just, I mean, she's a very joyous person, obviously. Mm. obviously. And uh, so it was very nice of her to come on the show and, and talk about all the st- stuff she talks about. Yeah, she's really great. She's so honest in this mm. conversation. And I I remember as soon as I – I was so excited when I got home to tell Penny 
I was like, I cannot wait for you to listen to Chrissy Swan. You're gonna, I'm mm-hmm. sure he does, but you're gonna love this interview. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's just a beauty, and we are incredibly grateful for how generous she was with her sharing. And like you said, she was a perfect choice for to kick off the year. To kick off the year, and and other than the fact that Chrissy's brilliant, um, the reason we also wanted to talk to her is because her show, Would I Lie to You, Australia, mm. hilarious show, is on now on it's on Channel Ten, and Ten Play. Featuring a former guest of ours, Luke McGregor, who's excellent mm, on it. True. And um, and just, I mean, there's heaps of people go through that show, but it is very, very funny. And she hosts and uh, yeah, you can, you can watch that. But for now, you can listen to Chrissy's one here. Here she is. Well, we are joined in the studio today by someone who, when she walked in the door, I just felt like... My first thought was, oh, God, there's a very famous person here. That's how I felt. Really? <laughs> That's how I felt. I, I don't see myself that way at all. Yeah, well, just it wasn't I, – I just felt it. That's what I felt. I went, oh, oh gosh, there's a very famous – and I had like a pang of nerves and now I'm okay. You've calmed me down. But <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by Chrissy Swan, by the way. You, you probably recognise the voice who has done so many things, every TV show possible, really, radio for a long time, mm-hmm. got your break on Big Brother. Home and Away mm. did that for like <laughs> a while. Yeah, I was making toasties at the, uh, what's the cafe called there where uh, Irene is? Uh, the, isn't it just Lass the life, life-saving, life-saving neighbours? No. <laughs> um, Alf's Den? Stupid of me to, to reference Home and Away when I've literally never watched an episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a neighbours girl. Me too. Same. Yeah. Or neighbours guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so am I. I was a neighbour's kid for sure. Yeah. 100%. Well, you were on it, so. Yeah, oh God, I oh, guess yeah. I was. Yeah. Were you? What I, was were an, you? I was an extra. Oh, yeah, yeah, a couple of times. You got yeah. bullied. Did you get bullied? Is that what happened? Yeah, by yeah. Toadie and Billy on Muck Up Day. Assholes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, would have been, I would have been like 16, okay. 17. Wow. Yeah, year 11 in Erinsborough High talk. Um, but actually probably 16, I think, because you're 10. Oh, because yeah. usually year 11s are played by 45-year-olds, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn type casting. Yeah, I was obviously ahead of the game. I just had <laughs> such talent that they saw. <laughs> he can play his age. But when, Chrissy, when you walked in, well, I mean, of course I see famous person as well, but I know you, Chrissy, and um, and but when, when the door opened, I, I wasn't quite at the door yet of the building, and as the door opened, I just heard your big laugh. I was like, <laughs> and I just felt like, oh, warmth is coming in. Because like you this. nearly killed me by sla- f- flying the door open yeah, and yeah. I was behind it. Just yeah. foolish of me. It's a silly design, that door. Yeah, it's a bad door. It's yeah. a terrible <laughs> door. It's a really bad door. It's not yeah. you. It happens a lot. Uh, it is our bad. <laughs> it is so, our bad. Josh, so we've got famous and warm. Josh, your word for Chrissy? Uh, just delightful. Oh, oh thanks. Mm. Yeah. It's nice. a delightful presence in the room. Oh, Good. Yeah, it's true. There you go. That's good. <laughs> it's true. All right, let's yeah. wrap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shorter get... episode than we've had. <laughs> but it can't get better than this. Yeah. <laughs> but God, we got we got down and deep. Really. <laughs> uh, I've full disclosure, I'm very nervous to be here because I'm a huge fan of the podcast. I've oh, and never ever miss an episode. And uh you guys really got me through that interminable lockdown in, in Melbourne where we all lost our minds. And um I when I was first asked to do the podcast, my initial reaction was absolutely not. Well, we, we met. <laughs> um, we met and we spoke about it and you were reluctant. Yeah. Understandably. I, I wasn't reluctant. It was no. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. cannot do it. I mm. can't, for, for many reasons, I can't do it. And then it was sort of organised out of my control and I went, I'm really scared about this. And then I remembered that one of the things that I'm trying to do is stuff that scares me. That's right. great. So that is why I'm here. Yeah, so great, just yeah. be gentle with me. Well, Bridge, bring out the pit of snakes. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get you in a pit of snakes. Um, while I've done that before. Really? That's nothing. Oh, yeah, that on remember, the, on I'm a celebrity. I'm get celebrity. me out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, literally a pit of snakes you've done. I think that's one of the things that no, do for everyone, isn't it? No, yeah. it was a water tank. With snakes. Oh, so I was in water with snakes and oh, crocodiles. Yuck. Crocodiles? Mm. Yeah, I've done that. Jeez. Mm. Doesn't crocodiles. sound overly safe. <laughs> it, it, oh, I, H&S over here. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Where were you in the wilds of South Africa? No, it wasn't safe. And I nearly passed out and drowned. 
Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but rated well. Well, then that's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. Congratulations. <laughs> you must have been thrilled. I was. Who was, on, who was on that series with you and who did you really? Joel Creasy. Right. Joel Creasy. That was where we fell in love and right. we are still very, very close friends. Oh, how lovely. Thank yeah. God for him in there. Now, nothing against Merv Hughes and stuff, but, you know, no, 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 Joel and like I. No, like you've got something against Merv Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a nice series. Every series that I've seen since, you know, I've thought, oh, I had a really, I had a really good group. That's of people. Good. Oh. Yeah, it was lovely. So what was the scariest thing you did when, this is not about that show, but I'm just interested. I yeah. always watch that and think, I couldn't do this. Yeah. Mm. Well, actually, the scariest thing was that um, I got my period twice in the, in the show. <sighs> And in South Africa, I mean, look, I'm talking to a group of men, so I'm not. I'm sure you're not completely across tampons. No, but in but I, I assume they found a branding partner for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it was they're just little little vignettes of me <laughs> between KFC and Carefree. Um, no, and in South Africa, they don't have the normal tampons that you know Australian women use. They've got applicators, and I had to learn oh. in a revolting pit. On my own, obviously, oh my there's God. no cameras in the toilet, thank yeah, God. Yeah. But I had to learn how to use an applicator on the fly for for two whole periods. And women listening to this will understand that is well and truly out of my comfort zone. Yeah, I mean, as, a, as being our role is to interview, so I feel tempted to ask details, but that seems wrong. To, uh, how does an applicator work? Well, I don't, you don't have to tell me, but that's just. I'm, ha- I'm happy to if you can handle it. Well, mm-hmm. I can handle it, but I don't. Know I think we <laughs> should all talk about these human yeah, things. Great. Yeah, yeah. So normally with the tampon, you unwrap it and it goes straight in. It's like a yep. mouse goes straight in, in yep. there, up there, and like a um, mouse. Yeah, it's like a little mouse. You know, <laughs> oh, with the tail. Yeah, and the tail, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and the yeah. tail yes. stands out, and that's what you yank it out yeah. when it's, you know, when it's cooked. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't the- soften this for us. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. And the applicator is like a long cardboard tube. Oh uh, yeah. That you that sort of guides it in. Totally oh. unnecessary, right? Oh, right? But it's like a rocket launcher. <laughs> oh, so oh. the tampon is like. <laughs> The rocket and the applicator is like the launcher. Oh my god! Wow. And so you've got to get that in and then launch the tampon <laughs> <Wow>. up the <laughs> hole. <laughs> did you did you talk this Did you talk this through with Big Swerve and Mervyn Hughes? Or? Of course I did. <laughs> did. Of course I did. He, he knows his way around an you applicator. Don't did. worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Merv, come in and give me a hand. <laughs> um, I'm tempted to just talk like this for hours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's what people tune for. Can I ask you? Oh, I, it's kind of on this topic. Can I ask about on the I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Yeah. What what is what's your relationship like with fame? Uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. And do you in, I don't know, enjoy is the right word, but do you do you do you like it or is it is it is it too Well, I think it's part of my life now, part of me, because it's been twenty years mm. of it. Um Every day, because Big Brother was twenty years ago, which is mind blowing. Mm. I mean, that, when you said that to me on the phone the other day, that it was twenty years ago, yeah. that was shocking for me. I don't know why I thought it was less, but it's twenty years. Twenty. I years. watched that season, Big Brother, and loved it. And that feel, and I guess I would have been yeah, early twenties. But that, that I know why it seems crazy. I know, but but that is true, and um, I'm. I'm fine with it now, um, absolutely no issue. But at the at the beginning, it was really difficult. It was really difficult. I felt hunted. Mm-hmm. Um, After you got out of the house, yeah. the brother house. Yeah. And I think pe- people, can, television and with, you know, pay streaming services and stuff, we consume so much of it. 20 years ago in Australia, there was three or four channels. Yeah. You had no choice. Everybody watched Big Brother mm-hmm. and I'm talking, you know, like I was in the, the final and I think over 3 million people watched that. Now, those numbers are That's wild. unheard of yeah. now. I mean, you're lucky to get 400, you yeah. know, and a, a juggernaut is 700,000 people. Yeah, and that, and mm. like, yeah, 3 million, that's like the the Olympics opening ceremony or something like that. Yeah, what, that's yeah. That level. yeah. So, and nothing could prepare me for that. And uh, I remember quite naively thinking that I could do this show for a bit of fun 
um, and just go back to my real life. And really? I just, yeah, I had, yeah. and I did attempt that. But um, you're a copywriter before. I was, yeah, and I just couldn't wait to get back to work. I was like, that was fun. Let's let's go back. Mm. And my first job, um, I, so I was working. I was running my own business, writing the real estate copy yeah. for you know really? location, location, location. I loved it because I'm mad for real estate and oh. I love to write. So it involved inspecting people's houses and writing you know the descriptions. Oh. And I love architecture, so it was just a great job for me. Yeah. And um, I turned up to my first appointment after the show and the it was an old Italian woman selling her house and she nearly fainted when I walked in the door. <sighs> and she was like, sit down, I can't believe it. She was calling her friends and huh. I thought, I don't think my life is the same. I don't think, yeah, you know, I think it's a fool's game to assume that I can just go back to how things were. She wasn't and just a huge fan of the adjectives you've used in yeah. real estate listings. <laughs> no, she, um, no she, she was really mad on the whole, is it comprises of or um, anyway, uh, I started to get mm. an inkling that things had changed yeah. forever and it turns out I was right. And at that time, um, a guy called Mike Perso, who's a radio god and is, is my friend now, um, he was – calling me often to ask if I would try my hand at radio in regional Queensland. And I said, that's just out of the question. I don't mm. you know, I'm, I'm just a girl with a cat who likes to wear flannelette nighties and mm. write shit. Yeah. And, um, and he said, I think you're a great storyteller and I would like you to try radio. And eventually, you know, my real life, became very obvious it wasn't there anymore and I thought I've got nothing to lose. So I packed up my Corgi Cross beanie and we went to Queensland and I started in radio and it was the best, most amazing decision of my life. I mean, your fame, God, fame is a, it, it, your, I mean, your particular experience with fame though is pretty wild, mm. I would say, compared to most. And I don't want to like make you talk about anything that you don't want to talk about because I know it's like a pretty sensitive, weird area. How well, it just feels like it's not real, and that's what I tell my kids because I was famous before I had kids, and then I had to kind of work that out. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, every few days I'll say to them, You know, fame means nothing, you know, being famous is it means nothing, mm. it's it's out of our house. It's not in here. And, I, you know, I think they get it. And even still, like, they'll see me on a tram or on a billboard or an ad will come on or something for what I lie to you or something, and it, it'll be on the television in our very normal life mm. and everyone sort of fr freezes and looks at it and, like, my daughter might go, oh, look, it's you. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, it's yeah. still a... It's weird. Mm. It's weird. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's a unique kind of situation. Not many people have to deal with that. Mm. How do you feel when that happens? Does it does it feel like an intru a weirdly an intrusion or something? No, it just it feels surreal. Yeah, and I'll just have a laugh or go. Haven't we got a funny old life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah. this a funny old situation? That there's like two streams of me. Yeah, yeah. like mm. the, the closest comparison I can think of is like when. Um, Clark Kent was working at the Daily Planet and, <laughs> and they'd be like, everyone would be reading an article about Superman, be like, oh, God, Superman's done it again. He's like, yeah, Superman has, <laughs> has done it again. But it's like he's, he's an not, amazing guy. No one knows he's Superman because every, to everyone else he's just Clark Kent. Yes. But then he goes out and, you know, becomes Superman, like you. Like, just like me. <laughs> just like me. Yeah. Like Helen Slater. There's a, there's a reference for you. She was Supergirl. Ah, my my um yeah. my brain is full of useless information. <laughs> we'll we'll make an edit there and put us going. Yeah, yeah, Helen's like a Supergirl. <laughs> we know Supergirl Slots. as well as we know Supergirl. <laughs> Before you said, um, I thought it was an interesting turn of phrase when you said my real life was sort of gone mm. when you're talking about your previous life mm. before fame. Has I'm assuming now your life now feels like your real life. Was there a point? where it went from feeling like a fake life and now, oh, this is actually my real life now. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, I think I don't know whether it's just me in my 30s or whether it's every woman in her 30s. I'll just speak for myself. I, I've always been very happy with my own company and sort of being um, – I liken it to a like you if you've got a, a a cat that likes to shit in the wardrobe only, right? That's that's my natural state. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to do things on my own yep. and be private. And so hang on, so you're the cat? I'm or, the cat. You're the cat, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're the wardrobe. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, this is a strange visual. <laughs> yeah. And I think when all of that went, the anonymity, mm. um, the uh, and then I met someone and had kids and I had so many jobs and I was never alone again and it sent me a, a little bit crazy. Yeah. And I... For, for for that period, I was kind of it was probably about ten years, where I was kind of going along with it. That I was ticking the boxes of what I had been told my whole life would fulfil me, and yeah. and that is, and it might not be a message that everybody takes in, but I certainly did that because I've had a very average middle-class upbringing and I picked up from society, I guess, or maybe from advertising or the media or whatever, that in order to fulfil your obligations to yourself and society, there are things that you need to do and I never questioned it. Mm. So I kind of found myself at... 45, with a life that felt like, you know, when you're in a 3D movie and you take the glasses off and you can sort of recognise it, but. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit fuzzy. It's yeah. a bit fuzzy. And you're kind of outside it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. There's there's an image that you can recognise, but there's something shadowing it around. Mm. And it, my whole life felt like that. And I started to realise that. I was going through the motions that I had kind of fulfilled all these obligations and I still wasn't bursting with happiness or contentment. I'd had the kids, I'd met the lovely man, I had the beautiful house. I, um, you know, I was a dutiful daughter and a wonderful friend and then I had the supplementary number of being famous, which we've been told our whole life that, you know, this is something that's just going to, you know, fulfil your life. Not only being uh, famous but also celebrated. Yeah. Like loved. Like that, that's, that's also another part of it, I think. Every, people who are famous aren't, often aren't loved. And, with, I mean, I don't say that to, just to, to... Oh, there's plenty of people that don't love me. No, but, you know, I think generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that you're a loved mm. person. I know that there are obviously people who like the same with anyone. Mm. But I think like as part of like that list of things to check off, if you want, if you're going to be famous, it's like, well, be a loved personality. Mm. And so I think that's, that is the, that is the top of the mountain. Yeah. Perceptively. Perceptively. Mm. But I found that it it doesn't mean anything. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. And all of those things, if you're not being honest with yourself and really thinking about them, and making considered decisions instead of just going with the flow, mm. um, they just lead to a feeling of unease. I felt like when I was a kid, I the, the first five, six years of my life when my parents were together, we lived in a house in East Doncaster, which was a deeply suburban um, suburb of Melbourne. And you know, classic developed in the 70s and 80s and, you know, dark brick double-storey houses and mm. lots of quarry tiles and chandeliers. Westfield know, is close. Very close and very handy. Shopo, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah Shopo, yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's lots of courts and, you know, it was the Australian dream and I very much felt 
that at, at that time in my life. It was idyllic. And my friend lived, my, my best friend in prep lived in the next street and we would ride our bikes and all that. It's like a scene from Poltergeist. Yeah. yeah. Poltergeist oh. is probably not the best. <laughs> not the dream. Yeah. <laughs> There yeah. were no dead bodies buried in the <laughs> yeah. in the backyard. Okay, anyway, we spent a lot of time together. She had an above ground Clark pool, which was like, oh my god, amazing! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sit on the edge though, because boom. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and we would spend every summer with her brother and her sister and whatever and other neighbourhood kids we could find and make a whirlpool because it was round. And I felt and I and I. It was like a cooperation. No one could break it. No one could stop because then it would ruin the flow. Oh and gosh. But eventually after half an hour of all of us working together, we could float and it would the, the whirlpool would continue. Oh, this is incredible. Right? It was amazing. Yeah. But I felt like my life for a long time was me just going along with what everyone wanted mm. and – F floating and feeling like I couldn't say, I want to go in a different direction or I want to get out or there's an icy pole with my name on it inside in the deep freeze and I'm going <laughs> to dig around in the chest freezer. I, and I was just like, yeah, no, this is fine. This is, mm. this is great. We've, uh, we're all doing what we need to do and I'm not going to upset the apple cart. But I think there comes a time, and I'm so fortunate that there did come a time for me where I couldn't stand the floating anymore. I couldn't stand it. So how long ago was that? I started to change around four years ago, started to question it because I kind of – I was 45 and I went, okay, let's have a look – I reckon I'm halfway, if I'm lucky. Halfway? To, to dying. Oh, <laughs> I reckon I'm halfway right, yeah. through my life. Let's say best case scenario, 90. Yeah. Do I – because things were just going to stay the same. Things mm. stay the same. Mm. That's the way it goes. Unless you consciously unless, do something. Yeah, unless mm. you get out and get an icy pole. That, you know? that analogy is stunning. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a beauty. Really the is. setup and everything. Is it? Don't yeah. oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. And I went, what – Am I am I happy with this going on the, the way it is? Am I happy with who I am with other people? Am I happy with who I am for me? Am I what what do I want to change? And then I started to walk. And I get emotional thinking about it because walking has absolutely changed my life. Really? Yep. Every because day you walk, yeah. Every day mm. I walk and there's you know, I now say if there's anything troubling me. It's hard to make changes and look at stuff, you know, and you don't want to do it. You want to stay in the whirlpool because it makes everybody happy. Mm. Um, but if I nowadays I'm so attuned and if something feels wrong, I, I call, I, I say I'm, I'm going to walk on it. And sometimes that takes an hour. Sometimes it takes 10 kilometres every day for a month. But I get the answer. What? What? In the end, that's beautiful. Mm, it's it really, and now I'm obsessed with like reading books about walking because it's really changed my life, and I want someone else to tell me that it has changed my life, and it has. Like, have you read the Twelve Hour Walk? No, I haven't read that. Oh, you like that? I've, I just love them because I read them and I go, "Yep, I was right." It's like <laughs> yeah. scientifically proven to change your life. So was there a point, you're obviously, you're in the whirlpool, mm. what, what made you think walking is going to, was it just you happened to go for a walk one day and realised at the end of the walk you felt um, better or? No, it, it wasn't that. It was I, there's a photograph of me. Oh my God, why am I crying all the time? I'm an idiot. <laughs> There's a photograph of me that I've got in my bedroom and it seems very egocentric to have a photograph of yourself. <laughs> not at all. No, I'm not like naked reclining on a velvet <laughs> chaise lounge. Oh, yeah, no, I don't have that either. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your room. You do have it. Um, no, it's a photograph of me and I'm. it's a school photo and I'm blinking because I blink in every photo and I just, I just love it. Mm. I'm about five years old and... Every time I look at that, I'm like, that's me. Oh, awesome. That's mm. the person that I was. And, you know, we all 
move away from that person. And I remember I was I was laying on my bed and I looked at this photo. And I'll send you the photo when I when mm, I get it home. Please, yeah. When I get home. In fact, I think I've got it on my Instagram. It's, it made the grid. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, and I looked at that girl and I thought, what did you like to do? What did you like to do? Because I realised at that that sort of, you know, breaking point of 45 that my day was full of shit I didn't want to do. And it was one thing after the other. And I was like, what? You were very happy. You were, you, you were joyous. What did you like to do? And I realised that what that Chrissy liked to do, who is still same. me, mm. the same person, was I really liked to be alone mm. and I needed to be alone and I spent a lot of my days completely by myself and I realised that I hadn't been alone for 10 years. I'd never been by myself. I went to a studio with lots of people. I had a house full of people. Everywhere I went was was people. And I love people, mm. but I needed time alone. And when you've got three kids and a and a house, you know, to run, and you're the CEO of that company, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, to get some time alone is really, really hard. That's mm. why we hide in toilets and, you know, it's the standard sort of thing. And I thought I've got to get out of this house. W- what can I do that is still acceptable? And so I started to walk and I started with five minutes and then I did it every day. I did it every single day. That was my time. And I realised that I was feeling better for for the time alone with myself, mm. who I really like. Yeah. I, I had a situation a little bit similar to that in that, and I'm just, I'm referencing here the, the memory of your childhood self that when I was in a relationship that I wasn't totally happy in. Mm. I remembered one day having, and I was young. I don't know how old I was. Mm. Maybe I don't know, eight, nine, or ten. And I was sitting in the car at the lights in um, on Belmore Road in Bourne. Yeah. And I remember seeing a couple standing there, just holding hands. And I remember thinking, oh, I can't wait to get married one day, like to hang out with like someone, like just you. Like one day I'll find the best person ever, and I'll get to spend my life with them. I remember thinking that'd be really great, and yeah. I had that. And then years later, like. 20 something years later, um, I was driving the same set of lights and I had that memory and I realised that young Hugh would have been so disappointed because I didn't, in that relationship, I was unhappy. Yeah, and that thought, wasn't your person. Yeah, but I was in a whirlpool of like, yeah, everyone, this is going, this is, mm. yeah. this is going beautifully. So On paper, it's so good. Just, mm. But it was a memory of my childhood self. I remember thinking, oh, young Hugh would be so disappointed. He'd be going, no, no, this is not what I'm excited about. That's not it. And that was what set the wheels in motion for me to do something. Did you go home and pack up your stuff? It took me two years. <laughs> oh. It took me a while, but it did, no, the it was whirlpool less was it. going really fast. Yeah, yeah no, but it, that, that's what set the wheels in motion for me. But don't you find that once those wheels are set in motion, there's almost a dr- a dread a dread of what you know that you yes. have to do oh, now. Awful feeling. Awful. It's yeah. an awful feeling awful. until it isn't. Awful. Mm. Yeah. And so, but that was the, it's really funny. I was thinking about my childhood self. Like me as a kid would be disappointed with that. Yeah. And thinking, oh, it's the same person though. I'm the same person. You're so the I same can, person. Yeah, that's me. And You're born the way you are. Mm. I, I really believe that. And mm. that's my one, I guess, light bulb moment from having children. What you think it is and, and what it is is completely different. Mm. And in my situation, my children were born exactly the way they are and the the great joy of parenting, the thing I enjoy the most is every day I get to find out who they are. Mm. They're not mine. That's so well put. They're exactly not mine. I and I thought that they were, like before yeah. I had them, I thought, oh, this is my child, it's like a kitten. Yeah, something that I'm going to mould and yeah, kind of, yeah, and it's, that is yeah. absolutely not the case. And what a privilege it is, and it's ethereal and otherworldly, actually, because they do come from you, mm. but they are not you, and you don't know them. Yeah, you don't know them. 
That's it's it. the weirdest thing. I've actually never heard it. It's exactly how I feel and I've never heard someone say it so well mm. that I've always, as soon as I had Charlie and, and Augie, from the get-go, I'm like, oh, you are 100% your own person and I don't have any, con- like, yeah. obviously. And I've we're living sure together, but you- I don't know who you are. Yeah. yeah, and you're learning more and more yeah. as you go. Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's a wonderful thing. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you mind me asking what are things that you felt like you had to, like, so when you were walking and the world started to make a little bit more sense, you mm. had your own space Yeah. and you're by yourself, what kind of thoughts were you having, and this is a, a Pretty deeply personal question, so you don't need to answer it. But were sure. there thoughts you were having around these are some changes I need to make or things I need to do? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I just let the thoughts happen. And were they uh, confronting thoughts? Yeah, of course. Of course, of course they were. Because I'd kind of got myself into a mess. I'd kind of got myself into a mess. And I wasn't enjoying really any aspect of my life. And I thought, what's happened to me? Like, I'm not really having any fun and everything's a drag and I can't do this for another 45 years. I can't do it. Mm. And so I, I changed my parenting first and I realised that I had it wrong for us. It's very, uh, it's a very personal thing how you parent mm. and what goes on in your house and what those three individual people need and what I'm capable of giving them. And I was honest with myself and then I was honest with them and it was so liberating because I think kids naturally sort of hero worship their parents. I know I did and I'm not comfortable with that because I know that I'm deeply imperfect and I like that about myself and I felt like I was pretending to like things that mothers should like because that's what children need. Mm. So I was running myself ragged to do the school lunches, which Mm. are shithouse boring. (laughs) (laughs) And I was pretending I knew things I didn't know which isn't good for anyone. No. And I was pretending to enjoy the school pickup and the chats at the um, school gates. I was pretending, pretending, pretending. Mm. Trying to play a role. Yeah. Because, I, you know, you, we're told that's what your kids need. Your kids need you to be involved everywhere. And I realised, actually, no, they don't. They don't need that. For me, it felt like... I was trying to insert myself into their lives where I'm not required. Their school is their community. It has nothing to do with me. I believe in my case only, and this may not suit anyone else, my children need their own place where I'm not. I don't want to do reading classes with them. I don't want to cook sausages on the weekend. They should have their place where they are them without the context of me. Mm -hmm. There's enough of that at home. You know, I'm a big presence at home. Mm -hmm. I'm everywhere. I'm in their faces, you know. That's enough. They need a break. They need a break from, from, from that so that they can find out who they are when they're not with me. And equally, they need to see that, even their own mother is flawed and doesn't like stuff and says she doesn't like stuff. Mm. So I started to be honest and I stopped the weekend sports. It made them miserable. It made me miserable. None of us were enjoying it. Mm. We were doing it. All of us were doing it because we were told that we should do it. We're not those types of people. And that was really freeing. So instead... 
we are currently on the hunt for the best butter chicken in Melbourne. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. We're on fire for that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where are the best soup dumplings? Come to me. Ask my 11-year-old because we know. <laughs> Where are they? They're at Hutong. Okay. Still there at Still Hutong. There. Okay, yeah. good. good. Um, and we've tried. There's also a great place in Box Hill, in the depths of Box Hill, that does a great Sha yeah. Long Bao. Okay. So we kind of started to enjoy ourselves for stuff that we want to do. Mm, it's beautiful. Mm. And we're much happier. And also I sort of set the precedent. Now they can say to me, I've got no interest in that. Mm. Or if I say, um, here's a big one, just the honesty. Honesty will set you free. And, mm. you know, I started about five years ago, I would be asked to do something and I would immediately think of what to say to get me out of it without hurting the other person's feelings. So mm. I am, my first stop was, well, like and I concoct. Yeah. <laughs> to protect their feelings. To, to protect their feelings. Mm. And then I asked myself, but what is the truth? What is the truth? Is the truth that you don't want to do it? And I would start saying the truth. And my daughter, you know, sometimes gets invited to parties that she's not interested in. And she's like, call the mother <laughs> and say that I have conjunctivitis. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> she goes, because. <laughs> we'll hire a makeup artist. Yeah. <laughs> She'll come no, around, we'll her. take photos, no, plant goes, them in the feed. She's like, no, no, because conjunctivitis is highly transmissible and mums hate it. Oh, I'm like, yeah. I get what you're That's saying here. Yeah. I get what you're saying here, but let's park that for a second. That's always an option. Yeah. Always. Yeah. But what is the truth of it? And she'll say, gym buses are dirty and I don't like it and I'm five foot ten and it's not for me. Mm. And so I say, well, why don't we just tell Casey's mum that you're not, this is not for you. This is just not your thing. Yeah. And, you know, you, you'll give Casey a present and... It's just not for you. You don't have to do that. And so we've started those conversations and I think it's a really good habit to get into yeah. mm. because then also you don't have to chase your stories. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the know, yeah, yeah. The, the truth is the truth and if someone doesn't like it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what other people think. Do you mind me asking about the walks mm. again and the way and, and you, you don't have to go down this path if you don't want to but I, I was kind of really – curious and moved by how moved you were when you mm. started talking about mm. walking. And I've got this question in my mind and I the, the, and I'll just say it. Were you was that emotion about what was revealed through walking yeah. or was it regret that you didn't discover it earlier? Um I just, I think it was gratitude, oh, tears okay. of gratitude. Wow. Um because you know, it wasn't hard to unlock what I had to do mm. and it felt very hard. It feels very hard when you're sitting in your room going, how do I fix this? How do I find joy again? And it's the walking is so simple. It almost sounds too simple. Like I just, I just worry people hear it and go like, well, you just walked. Yeah. But but I I know I know what you mean. I think I think I do. But I just wanted yeah, like like maybe what Josh you're alluding to it's like what like what is what it, what was it specifically about walking? Like what were you, you know? I think it's a it's a couple of things. One, as a woman in her late 40s, growing up in the 70s and 80s, um with a bigger body than I saw on Cosmopolitan and Cleo. And Dolly, all of them. <laughs> um, exercise or moving your body mm. was a punishment. Mm. And that's what exercise was. Yeah. It was not about your mind. Mm. It was if you walk for half an hour a day or do Jane Fonda's workout, which we had on vinyl, by the way. Vinyl? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, 
the 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 diet culture was so pervasive in the seventies and eighties, and it really was part of my DNA. You know, my mum bought into it. People commented on my weight my whole life, um, and I hated exercise mm. because it was a punishment. It was what I had to do to fix myself. Mm. And when I flipped that narrative and started to move for my mind, I realised that I had been tricked, I guess, and that it wasn't what I'd been told, like everything that society tells you. Mm. And, you know, it maybe, I, maybe I'm so moved because I feel like, you know, it could have changed my life earlier. I don't know. But I also believe that you can't do something until you can do yeah. it. Yeah, until you're ready. Yeah, yeah. until it just, yeah. you know, happens. And it, and it happened for me and I'm so grateful and I'm – and I, I can't stop now. And it's not and it, it's not about punishing myself. It's nothing to do with what I look like, which is, you know, unusual for a woman, I think. Um, I'm not doing it to look a certain way. I don't care. And that was another freeing thing for me. Um, well, I imagine with that history – of what people have said in that internal dialogue, there's no way you could have ever done it for mm. appearance only because it never would have stuck. No. Yeah. And also I never hated how I looked. Yeah. I yeah, okay. I never hated how I looked. Yeah. Or I, I never thought about it. I never thought about it. And that was another thing that happened when I was, when I became famous. Everyone, the first thing was about my body all the time and I never critically thought about whether or not how I felt about that. I just went along with it. So I would talk about my body like I cared about that or, um, you know, I would do weight loss things and it would feel so bad but it was like, oh, I'm just, this is what, the, this is what everyone does. This is what they want from me. This is who I am now. I don't. I don't know. Well, it's sure, like, it's the whirlpool of fame. It's yeah, the, it's the role that you you're sort of you assume you have to play as a famous person. You find what's my what's the thing people are interested in? Oh, that's working. They're Do more of that. They're telling they they want to talk about that. Okay, because mm. I talk about anything. I'm happy to talk about anything. But it, it came to a point on my. I walked on it. I was like, how do I feel? Actually, when the first thing that anyone talks about is my body, when I feel like I've got, I'm so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And there's whole articles about the size of my ass. I mean, it blows my mind and it blows my mind that I went along with it without any thought, no thought at all. And on, on my walks, I was like, oh, I think I might be uncomfortable about that. And I think it also might go against what makes me happy is to make other people happy. And reading about someone's body never made me happy. Mm. And I don't want to be that person to someone else. Yeah you know, whether my body is small or big or, you know, the, all of those my day on a plate things are abhorrent to me. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. cares? Who cares? Mm-hmm. And we've just got to stop it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even yesterday I did an interview with a well-meaning woman, probably late 50s, so I get it, grown up, probably – not allowed to eat potatoes and sweet corn, you mm, know. Mm. I get it. We have this lovely discussion about would I lie to you and then at the end she says, oh, I've just got to say, you know, as someone that struggled with my weight, um, what's your secret? And I was like, I'm so sorry but I don't talk about my body. I'm going to be 
I'm going to be that person. Mm. I'm going to be that person because it's irrelevant. There is no secret mm. and don't worry about it. The body's change. Everyone's different. Nobody looks the same that they did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago. We change. I don't understand the obsession. Mm. Well, it's, it's been in, it's been baked into us, like, yeah, from mm. children. Um, but I'm real. I'm just really glad. I'm really glad we clarified that with the walking because mm. I think that is a very powerful thing that most people as- would assume you or anyone would mm. walk religiously as a weight loss thing. Yeah, and and I I, I know that. I, I mean, I guess I do walk for, a, but I think the reason that I walk now that I think about it is not even so much as exercise. I mean, I guess that's a byproduct, but what I truly get out of it is clarity of thought. Correct. Mm-hmm. And I come up with probably most of my good ideas while walking. Absolutely. And and I'm just really glad, I think you put it so well, that like walking is, or any sort of exercise, I guess. I mean, I, I'm a walker too, mm. but- it it is it's probably simplified into being a, a physical health thing. But when people actually, don't believe it. Yeah, they mm. they just don't believe it. They can't believe it. And you know, I wish I had a dollar for every Instagram message I get from women saying, "How long do you walk for? What distance? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What time do you start? All of the the nitty gritties and I really should I, – I write individual responses, but I could copy and paste. Mm. I walk for my mind. Yeah. And and that's it. Mm. And I started with 300 metres. Mm. And then I went a bit further and then I went a bit further. And now I can't not do it. Yeah. Can't not do it mm. because – I see a real difference in the way my brain works um, and my joy in in life. I, I love life and I just want to have as much fun as I possibly can. Mm. And, you know, before I was honouring myself, I just hated everyone and everything and that wasn't good for me. That's not my natural state. Which is amazing to, I mean, not amazing, but it's shocking to hear no, knowing, I mean, I, I've known you over the years mm. in, and and you present as such a positive person mm. outwardly. So it's, it is quite shocking to hear that you hated everything and everyone. Mm. I'm naturally a positive person. Yeah. And also I love working. Mm. And I re- And so you've always seen me when I'm in yeah. work mode, which is, you know, I, I love it. I can't believe yeah. it. I, f- I feel like a lottery winner mm-hmm. that I, you know, get to do the jobs that I do. Um, and I was saying recently to somebody, and it's a bit worrying, I've got to walk on it. <laughs> um, work is not something I am, it's something I do. Mm. And I think it was in 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 relation to parenting because we're supposed to love parenting the most of all and which I do. I really enjoy it. And this is a good season, as I said to you before, I'm really enjoying my kids, 14, 11 and 9. But I think work is actually something I am. Wow. Wow. Mm. And I, I get the most purpose and I get the most purpose from my work. Mm, that wow. is comforting to hear. Is it? <laughs> For me. <laughs> yeah. It's a big one to say. It and I, is. I'm not 100% sure it's true, but I think it might be. Yeah. You'll have to walk on it and get back. I'll have to walk yes. on it. I, I feel like you, I mean, what you just said is very profound, so I don't want to skip past, I want to come back to it, but mm. I, do, I do want to talk about your walking. It's almost like... Mm. And Ryan, you must be the same, but it's it's you you walk for the feeling that it gives you. It's yes. the feeling, that's it. Yeah. The way it makes you feel mm. in general. Because I, I, I certainly relate to that with no I think It feels like it, an, a long term investment in my in the mood of the day. Mm. 
If mm. I walk, like I've already yeah. walked this yes. morning, I'm going to have a good day. Yep. Mm. I'm going to, my, my thoughts will be organised yep. um, because I've thought about the day for an hour and a half mm. already. I know what I'm going to talk about on my show. I, you know, I've, I've got to, I've got to plan things because my, my brain is often quite scattered. Mm. Um, and before I was walking and I should say as well, I'm obsessed with sleep. Oh, sleep yeah, good thing to be obsessed and about. and and walking and um time alone they're my three kind of pillars and if i do that so every good. day i have a good life because a whole life is just you've only got control over the next 16 hours if you're asleep for 8 you just got to worry about the 16 you forgot to mention Logie, sleep, walk, Logie, obviously. Logie, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, the things yeah. that make I'm you. I'm burning sage and <laughs> rubbing quartz crystals. In the hope Because Logie's, I mean, that's the ultimate yeah. goal. You, <laughs> if, if you are work, I am Logie's. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you dressed head to toe in gold? Why? <laughs> that's just my new thing. <laughs> Manifest. <laughs> Manifesting. Yeah. You've secreted it. Yeah. Remember the secret? Remember that was oh, a big yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> We've done yeah. it all. <laughs> anyway, we got off track. I can't remember what we were talking about. So for me, my, my walking is running. That's mm. that's my thing. And I think a lot of people will – some people might – their walking might be swimming or – Yes. Mine is, is, is running. Or that's, yoga or whatever. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and prioritising that can feel selfish, especially when you have kids. Yes. But it's not uh, selfish. I think, I think particularly when you have very small children, which yeah. I know that you have, yeah. and that is a very different cycle. And this is what I, I tell people as well because, you know, I get a lot of feedback saying, how do you find the time? I've got a four and a five-year-old and mm. I feel like shit and la, la, la. I'm like, yeah, you, spot on. Spot on you do and there's nothing you can do about it at mm. the moment. Mm. You need to control the controllables. Don't look at someone else's life. My kids are... Like my 14-year-old gets himself to and from school every day. I mean, that is like a miracle to anybody with small children. <laughs> yeah. But it happens. It happens. Does it and really? <laughs> it, I know you can't believe it because I just don't think you can overstate the catastrophic impact of small children on your life. Everything goes. You don't know who you are. You can't do the things that you took for granted and it's hard. It's hard personally for you, the individual, because also, of course, they are your priority and I don't know the answers because there are none. For a while, there's nothing you can do about it. That's what, that's what I think. Mm. That's what I think. And you'll send yourself crazy trying to find two hours for walking and, you know, yes, I'm sure, you know, you and everybody in this room, apart from you, Ryan, um, will look at me and think, fuck, I'd love two hours a day to just listen to the imperfects and think about my problems. Mm. You know, that'd be, that'd be great, good for you. You will get there. It mm. does happen. Mm. But until it does, it doesn't. <laughs> it's such a it, – it's, it's a really valuable point because I think similar to what you were saying before about the pressures of being – um, a mum or, or dad, but mm. I think mums certainly get a lot more of like, I need to have the lunches done and I need to yeah. enjoy that. And I, need to, I think there is a growing thing of the, you need to carve the time out for yourself and it gets put on people with young kids as well. Yeah. And I think I, I know I feel it a bit. I know my wife feels it a little bit and it feels like I need to be able to do that as well as bringing up these two kids under three. Yeah. Um, and working and paying bills it might and all not, that kind of it stuff. It might not like, be possible. just doesn't feel possible. <laughs> no, and it might not be. Yeah. It's highly likely that it isn't possible at this stage. Yeah, and I think sometimes taking a bit of that pressure off and going you're not a failure because you can't do that is really important because Absolutely. I think it does creep in a little bit for some people. Yeah. Yeah. You can only you do. You can only do what you can do. Yeah. And a half an hour walk when I had three kids under four and three jobs was not was not something that yeah. I could have achieved. It's just it's just not. Yeah. But it comes. It does come. Mm. You seem like you're in a wonderful um, place at the moment. 
as yeah. far as um i mean we we've never really met before apart from a couple of radio things but mm. you seem to me like someone who's in a very good place as far as you're very happy with your with the imperfections of your life and you're okay with them and you've worked out the formula that works for you for me yeah that must feel great it does it does but it is very bespoke yeah and because that won't work for everyone, but no, yeah. but and that was not- one thing I, I was the, another reason I was reticent to do this podcast is the changes that I made kind of match my own brain and traumas, and every it's a it's a very kind of personal in in the way that it is just mine mm. what what is working for me i can't imagine that it would work for everybody but everybody wants something that they can run off at work on the photocopier and do and and make themselves better and if there's one thing i've learned that doesn't happen and i think that's why i'm so moved about walking because we all want to feel good and a lot of us don't and a lot of us have spent our whole lives not feeling great and we've read the books and clipped the thing clipped the woman's day articles we've done all that i've certainly done all that and what fixed me was walking mm. and me a, 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 a group effort yeah me and how well I know myself and the conversations I can have with myself and the time to have those conversations, that's what changed things for me. And I think that's why I'm so profoundly grateful to walking and grateful to me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for I'm, hanging in there. Yeah. I, I, because of how much I love you, Chrissy. <laughs> I, like when, when, I mean, when we caught up last year, whenever that was. and you That were, was such a great day. Mm, I and, still dream about that coffee. It was great. It was so good. The coffee or the chat? The chat. The chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, just needed a bit of praise for a second. <laughs> um, but I, I was, I was because of how much I love you. I was so genuinely, so so happy for you because this was this is what I was getting from you when we chatted then. Oh, was it good? The same vibe, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and it's just a really nice feeling to be genuinely happy for someone. Yeah. Because it look it feels so, it feels so real. Yeah. And, and I think and I think what, and what we're hearing now is what I heard when we spoke one on one, is like is 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 true, like contentedness. Yeah. Um. I mean, whether I mean happiness, you could say, but happiness is almost like too broad a term, and contentedness maybe is like too subtle of a term for it as well but it's just like to, to talk to someone who I truly love to, to see you so fulfilled maybe that's the right I feel word. very calm about it's, things it's very inspiring it really is because it hasn't come easily you had to make some really hard calls along the way I that's did the, and to look back you must be so unbelievably proud to look back on the, you talk about looking back on you, you as a child, but you as someone at 45, a 45 year old to go, okay, this is going to be hard, but I'm making these changes. Mm. That must be feel really, yeah, you must feel really proud of yourself. I do. I feel uh, after about a year of walking and thinking and drinking, I drank for a bit to avoid everything. Mm. And then I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? Mm. What are you? What's creeping in? Yeah. What mm. are you? What are you trying to escape from today? Mm. Um, and I looked at that same, the photo of me as a little kid and I was like, oh, I feel like her again. I feel like her. Mm. It's the best. And I've also started to not answer questions just because. Quickly, yeah, yeah because yeah. I find that that's where you're reading off a script that you didn't write. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's so true. Yeah, you know? it really is. So true. So sometimes yeah. if you ask me something and I go, <laughs> pause. I don't think she heard me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I'm having just a little, just a little quiet meeting. Yeah. 
what do you really think? What, yeah. what do you really think? And and those answers are coming much quicker because I'm in I'm in good practice of them. You're in honesty mode. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's nice to say I don't know as well. Sometimes, so I have no idea. Yeah. Just I often say thing. that. Yeah. I, I often say, just leave that with me for a second, or an hour, mm. or you know, a week, and I'll I will get back to you. But I just don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet. And then I go for a walk and I get the answer. Walking on it. <laughs> it's like the magic well. Yeah. There's, um, uh, I think I might have brought this up on the show before, but I remember having a chat with my psychologist a bit about what you're talking about. How good are psychologists, by oh. the way? Oh, mm-hmm. incredible. Yeah. The mm-hmm. best thing that came out of COVID was those 10 free sessions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, and we we're talking about uh, a cognitive cohesion as opposed to cognitive dissonance. Mm-hmm. And when you say something that you don't quite, believe in that it has a, I think this is from her and from other research, that has a bit of a toll on you. Mm. But when you can get it right and you say exactly what you're thinking and it comes out right, there's this sort of thing that happens inside you and it feels so good. Yeah. And I imagine that's what, that pause and allowing yourself to then say what it is as well as you can say it and it comes out right. Every time you do that, you feel a bit better because you're not creating this dissonance inside you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Pretty profound to just take a pause and go, no, I'm going to give my best shot to answer this as well as I can. Yeah, because often we don't know what we think about yeah. something straight away. Yeah. That's fair. But we feel like we need to know. Well, we need to tell you answer. what you want to yeah. hear or yeah. we, we, we need to give an answer that is acceptable mm-hmm. and then we deal with the toll on ourselves later. Yeah. But that toll after, you know, 15, 20 things a day, it just – it just leaves you with a life you want to escape from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awful. Yep. So if you just make one little, just just once say, I'm not feeling that mm. or what about we do this instead or just little things. Like one of the first things I did was I went onto my phone and I looked up the lunch order service at my kid's primary school <laughs> and I ticked every single fucking day. <laughs> Margarita pita pizza, chocolate chip cookie and a bottle of milk, done. Yeah. Cost me $750 for the term. Yes. That's money. That's answer. great. Yes. I love that. That's like, it's kind of like, like, I love that toothpaste. I'm going to buy 50 of those toothpaste <laughs> so I never have to think about it. That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, it's good. So... It's little things like that. And I don't care. I said to the kids, some asshole at school is probably going to go, oh, doesn't your mum make lunch? Say, no, she doesn't. Yeah. She hates it. She's walking. <laughs> she hates it. And you wish that you had a chocolate chip cookie and a margarita pit of pizza every day. You little Suck shit. Suck it. Yeah. That's right. No, she hates it. Yeah. This is this is what we're doing yeah. until she changes her mind because that's the other thing. Yeah. It's like saying, we, it's like saying the unsayable. It's yeah. Like, what do you mean she hates it? It's so exciting. But, it's, but you're her children. Yeah. Mm. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, I just say to them, I don't like this part. I love you. I don't like this part of the biz. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, that makes yeah. me feel, feel sad. Like, like the school tuck shop industry is going to go through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they're, they're well, really—it's well, it's, it's really good. <laughs> mm. Like I don't—I don't have the wherewithal to make a pit of pizza, margarita pit of pizza. Yeah, yeah. Healthy feeling, hot, bang. Yeah. And all I did was tick a box. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, there's—I've heard Esther Perel actually talk about similar things to what you're saying there. Where she, I think, I think I remember her, her saying at some point that she's never seen her son play basketball. Mm. Son loves basketball, but she's never gone to a game because she's like, I couldn't think of anything worse. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope she tells him that. Yeah, well, she said it on the show. Because, so, all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because also, as parents, like the house that you've got, I call mine the compound. Because once you're in, you can just take your clothes off and no one can see anything, right? <laughs> um, it's it, it's like a microcosm of the world. So your kids, you know, I nearly killed myself trying to make everything perfect. That's not fair to them because that's not the way the world works. So they cu- they come home and I've, you know, bought a roast chicken to turn into a sandwich for them and I've made homemade LCMs and all of that <laughs> bullshit that yeah. we that we go through. That's not the world. That's not the world. You know, the fact that I don't want to go like Esther Perel to go watch a basketball game, 
I will tell them that now mm. because that's how the world works. Not everybody's going to pretend to be interested mm. in what you're interested in mm. and you need to deal with how that makes you feel and even if it's your own mother, I'm sure my middle son would love a homemade lunch every day. Sorry, I'm, I can't do that. I've got yeah. no interest in that. It's not like you're not going to get fed. You will get fed. You will eat something. It might not be what you like. But how you deal with not getting your own way from someone who is supposed to make your life easier, that's a good lesson. Mm. That's a good lesson. I also sat them down and I said, you know, because I would sit there, eyes hanging out of my head, patting their bottoms to sleep because that's what they liked. Mm. I was nearly dead. It was killing me because I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go to work. I called a, called a family meeting and I said, this ends now. I, I cannot be the first person out of the house and the last person asleep. That doesn't work for me. Mm. I understand it works for you, but it doesn't work for me mm. and I'm fairly important in this family. So from now on, you're going to have to just go to sleep like I did every day of my childhood, find a book about Narnia and off you go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Love it. Yeah. That, no, that's, I saw a lion. That, no, I saw a lion. <laughs> that's your life now, all right? Yeah. And it, it might be uncomfortable. That's life. You deal with that. That's up to you now and I trust that you can deal with that, that you're not getting what you want, that you're going to experience some discomfort that you're, it's going to be something that you don't understand, you don't know how to get to sleep without me in the room, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. This is, and, and they this did. Is, again, a reminder for everyone, this is what works for you because some people were going, I just fucking love like getting the perfect lunch for them, getting it ready, seeing them yes. off. Yes. Mm. That's the- Absolutely. If that's what floats yeah. your boat. And equally people might be like, why are they so obsessed with butter chicken and soup dumplings? Yeah. That's, okay. that's us. I get that. That's us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally get that. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> yeah. That's what works for us. That's our interests. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the it, as you just. It's such a think good thing to remind people listening. I think because yeah, we're not it's saying- easy to hear a good a, an example of someone like yourself who's now really thriving in in your life and go well. I'm just going to do the things she's doing. The hard work is working out what it is for you. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. being strong enough to ask for it and then action mm. it. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. That's a wonderful chat. Thank you. That Sorry, was unless you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just, I feel like, you know, for me, even as a 42 year old man, I'm just going, yeah, this is, I feel like I'm on this journey right now. I feel like I'm like, I'm really establishing some things at the moment that are working for me. Yeah. And I, it's, it's a very freeing feeling. And you feel like life gets a little bit easier when you go, oh, yeah, no, that works for me. So I should do it. And so, yeah, I resonated a lot with me. And I'm sure it has with many people. Well, that's the first step is realising, you know, how far away you've gotten from who you should be. Mm. And it happens to every adult, I reckon, every single one. And the more layers of responsibility you put on, um, the easier it is mm. to just lose yourself. But mm. I, I, And I would probably, I would assume... That your your kids probably idolise you way more now, and that they're seeing someone who's yeah. like, oh, she's look how look how much look how powerful she is. She just does she just does whatever she wants. Well, do you know what I've found? She's not like other mums. They, um, <laughs> I'm not like. Other mums. <laughs> no, that's true. But, this is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. I often say to them, "You really had your work cut out for you when you chose to be born to me." <laughs> but, I, but I mean that without brushing it aside. I, I, I mean that it, it, truthfully, and that I think that yes, yes, you. Th I, I know. Look, I'm not a parent, so I certainly don't want to give advice. But you idolise people who, and maybe it's unconscious when you're younger. But I think you do unconsciously idolise people who are true to them and are being original in some way. Mm. And and that if that originality comes from a place of like true honesty, I think you just pick up on that. Mm. And, and, well, yeah, yeah, well, if not now, they'll be doing a podcast in 20 years going, my mum used to do it, and they'll yeah. be laying yeah. out the things you did saying that yeah. was that was hugely foundational for me and my development as a person, I reckon. I hope so. That's all you can hope for. And I've said to them, look, you know, the decisions I'm making now, please, I've I've made them with, you know, 
your best outcomes at the forefront of my mind. If it turns out (laughs) that I was wrong, I apologise in advance, but you've got to know that I love you more than anything. I respect you. I will always be here for you and I'm making these decisions, you know, without fear or favour for you. If they're Mm. wrong, I apologise and, you know, I'll pay for the therapy. (laughs) 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 But I tell you what I have noticed Mm. and I think what I was missing in, you know, in those years where I was a bit lost was any form of true connection I didn't really have that and I think that was where I I got that from work Mm -hmm. and that's intoxicating to me and I didn't have it with my kids and I think it's because when they were very small, who who are you? You don't know who they are. They can't talk. You can't share your experiences. They can't blah, blah, blah. So there wasn't that connection and I found that since they've gotten older and I've been more authentic with them and honest – the connection is so strong and so tender mm. and they're so kind to me because, you know, they care for me now, not in a weird, you know, you know, I've parentified them sort of way. But if I'm really, if I'm exhausted or I've worked too hard or whatever, I can come home and my daughter will say, how how was your day? And I'll go, I just need like 10 minutes just to breathe because I've been, in, I've been on all day and yeah. everyone's mm. faces and I'll hear her make a cup of tea for me without asking. And that sort of care and kindness wow. um, and my sons do it too and I haven't asked them but – her giving me comfort when their comfort has been my priority since the day they were born is deeply gratifying because they're the sorts of people that I want to leave in the world. Mm-hmm. Kind people, caring people, people that don't have to be told, you know, what is a lovely thing to do for somebody else. And, you know, that has started happening, little things like that and, I think that's how I know it's working. Mm, beautiful. Mm. Have you tried horn, please? What's horn, please? It's an Indian place. Indian place. Fits butter right chicken. North. Yeah. No. Oh, it's good. We don't like the sweet butter chickens. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And we're also fussy creamy. on roti. No, creamy's fine. Creamy's fine. Okay. Creamy's fine. Preferably, the chicken is out of the tandoor first. Yeah, great. And then is turned into the butter chicken. Gosh, this is radio. Yeah. We get so much content out of this. Yeah, I go on. visiting all the. <laughs> <laughs> I know this would be a week. It'd be a week of content. <laughs> <wouldn't> it? <laughs> uh, well, it might be this afternoon. Hey, tomorrow it's curry in a hurry. Chrissy makes chicken curry in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be, be. We're bringing in Stephen Curry. <laughs> curry in a hurry for five. minutes. <laughs> Who's better, oh Curry or Chrissy? <laughs> um, Chrissy, thank you so much for coming in and for being so honest um, and raw. Awesome, and and Thanks. also knowing now what you say yes and no to and how important that is that means a lot to us. That, yeah, that does, you suggest yeah. this, it really yeah. does. Yeah, because oh, it, that, thank you so much for asking me because I was I was truly nervous, and as you know, I did knock you back first because I was just too. I was just yeah. like I can't. I also don't want to crap on about myself all the time. You know that can be tedious and uncomfortable. But I would say helpful. And I feel very comfortable with with you. And mm. my friend Claire Bowditch, who's also done mm-hmm. this podcast, um, she sent me a link last week and it had a beautiful, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was like the reason it's important to share your story is that there might be one person with a, a hole exactly the same shape as yours. Oh, that's nice, yeah. And, you know, mm. you've got the applicator. <laughs> 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 we are the applicator. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I really, really loved it. It was great. Thanks, Thanks Chrissy. Chrissy. Cheers. Thank you. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. Chrissy Swan, 
I meant uh, what I said when she walked. Sorry, I just completely cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> God, the, the dread in your eyes when you realise you cut me off. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't actually anything that, except that I just want to say, Chrissy Swan, I love you. Okay. That's pretty big. That's yeah. pretty big, but I do love I love Chrissy Swan. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, Your really turn. Meant, I, I meant what I said. <laughs> when she walked in, I had this feeling of like, there's a very famous person in here right now. Oh, yeah. Well, she is. Hmm. She is a famous person. But God, what a genuine... She's, a, she's just, a, just so being in her, yeah, warmth, warmth yeah. being in her presence is, um, and then when she walked in the room, yeah, she just brings in this like positive energy. She sure does. Yeah. Just love her. Love her. Um, it was one of those episodes where I felt like I was, as she was talking, I was stopping and taking stock of my own life and things I could be doing maybe better. That was like a, I, oh that God, had that yeah. effect as she was talking, which I hope it did for other people. Well, the stuff yeah. she was talking about made me, it makes you question everything. Mm. She's like, yeah. Yeah, she made so many like dramatic changes in her life. And the honesty in which she talks about it, like the kind of, there's a sense, you know, when you ask someone a question and you feel like they've just got an answer ready to go, mm. it feels like she, every time you asked her a question or she was talking about something, she was genuinely trying to say it in the most truthful way. Yeah. It was important to it her. It was for, important to yeah. get it right. Yeah. And to, to say what mm. was really going on. And I feel like that's kind of, I find that kind of inspiring to be around because yeah. it makes you want to be sort of true to yourself and true. Well, one, one the obviously one of the big things she talked about was the her making these like conscious choices. And the only reason why I bring that up is because it reminds me of what I feel like, Hugh, you're kind of doing this year. Like you, I remember you said at the sort of at the start of this year, it was, I don't know if it was like a resolution or something, but it felt like you were making like conscious choices to be honest with people. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, with my with the demands on me, I feel like yeah. the last ten years have been huge demands on your time. Yeah, yeah, and I feel I've been pulled in every direction for quite a long time. And I just through chatting to my psychologist about it was just at the end of last year was I need to start saying no, but actually like set up boundaries for myself. This is what I will do. This is what I won't do, and mm. and you stick to it. Mm. And I have kind of done that before, but then in the end. I just have these weaknesses where I go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. No, no, I'll, I will do that. No, I'll do that. And I just, and this year, I'm, oh, you guys have seen it. I'm, I'm saying no a lot more mm. to things that I don't, some things that I do want to do, like I'd like to do it, but if I do it, it's going to be at the cost of something I'd probably rather be doing, like being with my family. Yeah, mm. but, it's, but, but I think the truly terrifying thing to me about what you're doing is you're not only just saying no, but you're telling the person why. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Whereas like my, my, my instinct is always just lie, 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 <laughs> lie, make an excuse. And, and then, and then what happens is obviously you get yourself into like this weird web of lies mm. that you then have to live this fake life to prove to the person <laughs> that you're actually doing the thing that you lied about. Yeah. Whereas you're like done with that, it seems. Yeah. Well, here's, I'll give you what I identified as what my big problem was going to be was when someone that I like or a group that I really like get in touch and ask me to go and speak. Yeah. I worked out with the Resilience Project, here's, much I, here's how much I can do this year and we've committed to that. So mm-hmm. when people I don't really know get in touch, it doesn't go to me, it goes to the bookings people and so they yeah. are I mean, you to, still do so much for the Resilience Project, like you still- Yeah, yeah. I'm, do, I'm doing heaps of stuff, mm. but we sort of, we worked out what I'm happy doing mm. in, in, in conjunction with the podcast, mm. but do people still come straight to me, people yeah. that I know will come straight to me and say, hey, I've got this coming up, can you come and speak? Mm. And I always say yes to friends because I just feel like- like an asshole if I say, even if I know I can't, it's going to be hard, I still say yes because I just fucking like asshole if I don't do it. So mm. I'll give you three examples of where I've said no in the last week where it was so Give me two and I'll tell you if I need one more. Okay. Don't want to labor the point. <laughs> you probably three seems excessive. <laughs> you probably only need one, don't you? I think no, one's enough. Three is good. Three is good. Eight, eight examples. <laughs> So you want to give 15 examples? Okay, go. Sorry, three examples. I love it. Well, I just, they, they, they're all, they, I think, no, I will give you two because two of them are quite similar. But so <laughs> I identify that we're probably going to touch on me that I really like or it's for a group of, or it's a brand or a company I really like. I'm going to find it really hard. Mm. But I just have to still say no. So the first one was uh, Hawthorne Football Club, who I barrack for. Mm. I love Hawthorne. Yeah. said, look, we, we'd love you to come and speak at this um, function to all the players and all the staff. Um, and here's the date. And I looked at the schedule and we had two episodes in the morning. We had two episodes in the afternoon. It, I literally would have finished the second episode here, driven to where they were, talked for 20 minutes, got back in the car and just got back here in time. Yeah. 
And I was like, well, it's Hawthorne. Like I've backed them since a kid. I can't say no to them. Yeah. Just have to. So I got back to them and said, yeah, I'm in. Sounds great. And yeah. the second I did, I felt so stressed going, this is going to be like, how do I, how much, it, it could work if the traffic's really good, but like. And, and also for, in your mind, you're like a premiership's on the line here. Yeah. <laughs> like if I don't go, <laughs> that could be the difference between a flag. <laughs> anyway, I ended up, um, the closer it got to the guy was like, I said to him, I, I reckon I have a chance. I just did to see if I can move some stuff around. And the closer it got to it, I just knew that I couldn't. Mm. And so I sent him a voice memo. So he could hear the anxiety and stress in my voice mm. of me. So he could hear how hard it was for me to say no. Yeah. And I just said, I'm, I'm, I am so sorry. I love the Hawthorne Football Club so much, yeah. but I, I can't do this because it's just going to put too much stress on my day. It's just not going to work. Mm. Um, and of course he was totally fine. He completely understood. Yeah. The other one was someone that I admire. I don't, we sort of know is Nat Medhurst. She's played netball for Australia right. and I really look up to her a lot. And mm. she's at Western Australian Cricket Association. I love I love cricket and mm. I love I love the Western Australian cricket team. I don't know why I just do. And she said <laughs> specific we, love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very likable team. Oh, they're so, they just yeah. so, they bowl fast and anyway. And I um, <laughs> so I is that because of the whacker pitch? Yeah, good, maybe that helps. Great cricket knowledge. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the yeah. few cricket things I do know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to know though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't write back to her again. Gave it about a week and then she sent me a text message saying, "Sorry to follow up, but I really need to know." Sent her a voice memo. Went for five minutes. This one, really saying, mm. I'm "Just this is hard for me because I look up to you a lot, and you're really great." Yeah, I can't do this. It's mm. just too much. It's just it'll be 48 hours to do it, and that's 40 hours away from my family, and I need that time at the moment. Yeah, it's really special to me. Like my son starting school, I want to be around all the time, and blah blah blah. And she's like, "Yeah, of course, totally understand. That's great." So it's hard to make changes like this. And this is just a small example. Mm. I, Chrissy, I'm sure she said no to things. That's part of her change. She made other changes as well, but mm. doing it's hard, but it's very rewarding because you are, it feels great because you are being very true to what you want and what you need. Mm. And I have been woeful at that for a very mm. long time. And it also just doesn't, you, you, if you tell, if you, t if you tell the person the truth as to why you don't want to do something as opposed to making an excuse, it's like this, what are they? What what can they say? Yeah. Like, you know, it's you, they can't really yeah. go. Oh well, because you know, the, the, a lie could be, oh, I'd really love to, um, but I've committed to um, this other thing that I, that I'm doing instead, so um, I, I can't do it. Or or the other th other classic one is like, oh, I think I'm going to be, I'm, I'm feeling pretty sick, so I actually can't. You know, you lie about sickness, yeah. and then of course you then pop up on something else. And then like, I thought you were sick. Yeah. 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 Or, or yeah. they say, oh, we can move. Oh, we'll just move the date. That's okay. We'll no, I'll be sick then too. Yeah, I'll be yeah. sick in July <laughs> yeah. as well, actually. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> yeah. to be sick in a few, most of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Sore ankle, I think, is coming in August, so I won't be able to walk <laughs> yeah, or drive. So. <laughs> so I think for me, what I kind of did, not intentionally, but when I look at it, I've kind of thought to me this year, what's really important to me is time with family this podcast and the Resilience Project. They're the three things I just, I really want to mm. give the, everything to that and everything that's outside of that. I, I, I'm i not going to say no to it, but if, it, if it's going to take away and diminish the time and quality of time and mm. what I can do with those other three things in my life, it's a no. And I think the really good people in my life will, will understand and respect that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think it's interesting that I would feel, I would have a fear that, people are going to think I'm rude or self-centered to a degree, a bit selfish or many different negative connotations to it. But then when I sort of think about people in my life who I know I'm getting a straight answer from when mm. I ask them, like I know that they're not going to make something up mm. and th as long as they're not like kind of assholes about it, but if they're kind people mm. who are just going to tell me the truth, they're the, they're kind of the people I really respect. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I just know, I just know what I'm getting, and it's it's so, it's so relaxing. To, it's kind of relaxing to be around. It kind of makes me think of, um, and this is like a very extreme example of it, but um, Sam Harris, whose podcasts I've listened to a lot of and read some of his stuff, I think he commits to never tell a lie. So he said he just doesn't lie about anything. So he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking about stuff. Big Jim Carrey fan. <laughs> 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 That's where he got the idea. So reference to the film Lie Lie. Yeah. 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 But um and I, I don't think I could ever do what he's doing. But 
and I, and I think it's an interesting discussion point whether it's 100% practical and right. But one of the things he says is that you don't realize the cognitive load you're taking on by lying yes. all the time. Mm. And when you, which is essentially what Christy was doing by every day, it's like a lie to go, yep, I'm going to turn up to the school gate and chat for 15 minutes. I'm going to make the lunches because that's what I'm meant to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and he said, once you know that and once everyone in your circle knows that, there's suddenly so much more room for other thinking, for other energy, for other things. And just kind of less bullshit. <laughs> he would say it much more eloquently. Mm. But uh, but actually, thinking about lying at, or, or telling the truth with your kids, it made me think that the other day we had um, a Soph needed to, was going to go to a hen's party, and my son Charlie, he's three, and up until this point, for some reason, I would have told him or we would have told him, Mum's got to go to work or make it sound <laughs> like it was something really important, rather yeah. than. She just wants to go have fun with her friends. And Soph actually brought it up with me saying, I don't want him to think that the only reason why I don't mother him is because I have something more important to do, like work. Or, yeah. Or not yeah. more important, but just that I've, I have to work or I've got a commitment that I can't get out of. Yeah. Uh, I want him to understand that I can also just go have fun, fun with my friends for the sake of fun and come back. And it's not a big deal. Yeah. So we... For the first time, kind of, well, not the first time, but it was the first time she'd spent a couple of days away from him and decided we'll just say she's going to have fun with her friends. Mm. And he, it didn't bother him at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> After, I mean, he, for a three-year-old, a hen's party probably sounds extremely fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't describe exactly what was happening on the party. <laughs> uh, the other theme Just hens. a lot of hens and... Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I get what you mean. Chickens, hens, yeah. roosters, all yeah. of them. Um, and so... Yeah, she went away and then um, about halfway through he, he asked me when she's coming back from her holiday and I said tomorrow and he was excited to see her and it wasn't a big mm. deal at all. But it was weird that up until that point, we'd, I'd, in my mind, I thought, no, no, he needs to – it's a weird thing, yeah. game you play, creating these stories and it was just much better to tell the truth. Yeah, yeah I mean, to me it feels like an extreme sport. Like mm. to be <laughs> honest with people like that, it's like, God, the, I feel like the risk involved – it, it, even if it's not tr real risk, yeah. it feels like you're kind of flying close to the sun, but then the thrill afterwards, mm. like the endorphins and the adrenaline of like just telling the truth, yeah. I feel like is... I think we should do a thing this year where that is just, we're going to do that with this podcast, no matter what we just... I actually think we're internally in oh, a, I think we're, communication. I think we're very good. I, I've never worked in an environment where there's more straight honesty mm. than the four yeah. of us and the extended Imperfects team. Yeah. But I... I actually think that's one of the reasons it's uh, such a joyful True. place to work is mm. that I don't think... I, I, I sort of, I reckon I bent the truth before with you guys when like we've had a big morning of recording and we had 15 minutes before this episode started mm. and... What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what has he done? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um, I actually went and killed someone. <laughs> I know I said I was getting a coffee. But if I'm being truthful, <laughs> I am a contract killer and I knocked off a quick job. I, I was so desperate to have coffee and a smoothie because I hadn't had a coffee yet today and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. And I just said, oh, I might just go for a quick walk. Josh, Josh do you want a coffee? Like I was sort of being polite and sort of saying, but I just want to, I just need to get out and get away from everything. Yeah and sit by myself and scull a coffee very quickly and a smoothie before I came back here. Yeah. But for some reason, I couldn't say to you guys, guys, I need coffee and I need a smoothie. I'll be back. And I need to be by myself. I need to be by myself. Yeah. What did you say? I think I said, oh, I must go for a quick walk or something. Or I, I mean, I didn't lie, but yeah. I yeah. didn't say exactly. I felt guilty about that. Mm. Ah, I yeah. felt I had to, had to make it sound like, oh, I might just get out and walk for a bit. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I, yep. I feel I know like, what you mean. Yeah. No. Well, yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I bloody did kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside. Um, no. Um, you and me? If yeah. I, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was I was going to go exactly the same situation. I was like, I needed some fresh air. I needed to get out of the studio. I needed to go for a walk. And I, in my mind, I was like, I just need to go walk by myself in silence and be away from yeah. people. And and Josh, you said, uh, you said, oh, I might, um, I, I'm, I I'm going to go for a walk too. Yeah. And I was halfway through about to invite myself and then I was yeah I I think I noticed the look on your face and then <laughs> well yeah cuz cuz you're like oh, I might uh, maybe I'll come along yeah and and because I'd promised myself only seconds before <laughs> um, this time to myself and I knew I needed just some yeah 
um, me time essentially and some fresh air. I was so glad that you retracted the. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't say. So I didn't, didn't have, have to, to say no. no. Yeah. Yeah. Because I because because yeah, I really did need it to just be me, where, as opposed to like, you know, obviously I love you, but I don't. But I just needed it to be me. So that, that would have felt been, like. Well, that felt like a really nice bit of honesty between us, and I, I felt really good about our relationship and the way we work, and mm. that we were able to go. Because then, as soon as I said it, I was like, "Actually, I want to be by myself too." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Were you going to kill someone? Because <laughs> well, someone, one of us has killed someone, <laughs> and I want to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> you know, this this is the episode that if God touch wood, one of us ever kills someone, <laughs> <laughs> this this will be the episode they'll clearly bring up. It's like you can see back in two thousand and twenty three, <laughs> they were thinking about it even then. The ABC has got footage of this conversation, so it's, <laughs> yeah, that's just true. Australian story filming this. Absolutely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> this would be a new Australian story. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's not do the one with you. There's a, there's a more interesting yeah, story here. There's a much more interesting story. He killed yeah. someone. <laughs> he absolutely killed someone and he admitted it. So just to go back to the, the whole practicality of how you can maybe – for me, I kind of – I've. I actually put folders on my laptop of the things – they're the only folders on, the, on my desktop of the things that – I'm committing to this year, I guess. Mm. And what made it easy when I had an offer come up to do, well, there are three essentially different sporting talks. Um, I, I have committed to do the Queensland State of Origin team this year. Very excited to be with them. Yep. And in my head, I was like, that's it. I'm doing one club this year. That's it. No matter what else happens, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who asks, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I'd made that rule for myself. And as much as I would like, I love cricket and, and I love Hawthorne, so yeah, but it was just outside the rules. Mm. And I've been inspired by you, Ryan, where you made a rule for yourself that you just say to yourself, "I can't have an iPhone. I, I cannot have an iPhone. I just can't." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I kind of did this rule of I can't speak in another sporting club, and that was it. That's the rule. That's the rule. So, so, and- the, so the folders. Do the, the folders like if the if the offer doesn't fit into one of those folders, then it doesn't fit anywhere. Yeah, and people could say, but doing a resilience project talk does fit with those and, and I, it does but it's it's I've already committed to a certain amount this year yeah. and they're full mm-hmm. and so yeah that's good I want to get better at saying no quicker I've heard um, I think it was Lee Sales and Annabelle Crabb talking about this mm. um, the importance of saying no quickly oh, yeah. like when you can't do something because I feel like like there's a there's something I um, need to say no to and I've waited about a week and it just weighs you down. But if I just, as soon as I got the message, said, no, I can't do that, and could be truthful, like you could be really truthful, or you could just say, no, I'm sorry, I can't get there. But I feel like the the cognitive load and the that weight of just like taking that on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then mm. it also makes it worse for the other person. <laughs> yeah. If you don't say, yeah. if you just let them string them out for longer, saying maybe I can do it, maybe mm. I can't, it's yeah. a, it becomes a pain for them. Quick no is good, isn't a it? Quick no, yeah. I mean, a quick no is great because then you can always retract the no. Absolutely. Usually, yeah, yeah. You know, actually, something's freed up, or like, you know what? I've changed my mind. So you just say no to everything. <laughs> so if you just immediately say no, like, will you marry me? No. <laughs> and then you can always go back on it. <laughs> actually, no more offers have come along. I might take you up on that. <laughs> you know, I know it was six years ago, but you know, it's looking grim for me. So I, that's a yes, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So I haven't really thought that through because I didn't know we're going to be talking about that, but I think I want to get better at saying no quicker. No quicker is good. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, that's like, that's like an honest no. Mm. Listen to your gut. Uh, yeah, I was about to say your gut knows straight away. Yeah. Mm. There's a book by someone and he says, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> That'll be the link. <laughs> www.someone. <laughs> there is a book by someone. And he says, when making decisions, we we think, oh, is, what did my head say? What does my heart say? You go to your gut and you go, what is my gut? And your gut yeah. knows the right answer. Your gut knows. It's true. Can I, um, <laughs> Nick, a friend of ours, Nick Hutton, has a theory that he flips a coin when he can't make a decision, flips a coin and obviously has like, I'll go on one side and I won't go on the other, flips it and then sees what he has to do. And then the, the, the thing that he, if it says like, all right, now I have to go because tails came up, then he gets an immediate reaction from that of if it felt good or not and then he can always change his mind and go actually no that's a sign i should not go oh i like that Mm. i like that a lot the other thing that he does is great is he has a glass of milk with a chocolate jam donut once a week that's another great thing he does (laughs) oh that's really helpful thanks you yeah Yeah. (laughs) good practical advice (laughs) but i've always enjoyed that 
uh, yeah. that thing. I love that idea. It's yeah. great for picking meals at restaurants and stuff. Oh, yeah. When you can't decide between two things, flip a coin. Yeah, and then you want, you, you're not sure if you want to eat a head or a tail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Chrissy's still listening to this? <laughs> anyway, she was brilliant. And I, I hope um, our waffling there <laughs> helps yeah. people a little bit. Yeah. It probably is worth saying that I, we were saying just off mic before that um, when this podcast started, the idea behind this chat was at the end of the interview, I would go through advice and strategies and-, and um, as, as our resident expert. Yeah, sort of yeah. like that was the role that I would mm. play. And the older I've got throughout this and the more I've sort of grown with my family and life experiences, I've realized that the more the older I get, the more I realize I don't know. Mm. And the more uncomfortable I feel, you know, we have M come and talk to us about some incredible stuff and it makes me feel- Dr. M. Dr. M comes mm. in and I just think I, I, I'm not comfortable in the role of, here's like, here's my advice on mm. because- well, when we first started the podcast, so we were saying no to that role. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I instead I'll give anecdotes that may or may not help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because we, now, because at the start of the podcast, it was it was only just like me and you talking, yeah. with, and you would talk to a guest. Yeah. And since now we've got the Academy of Imperfection, yeah. where experts come in, yeah. and we've got Doctor M. Yeah. So you know, I'm not an expert, and I, yeah. Well, you are an expert in some things, but. There's not so everything. Not everything. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um. Great. Cool. <laughs> well, nice to see everyone again. No, I love it to see you all. Yeah. yeah. It's Thanks great to be back. Thanks for coming. In. We've got some really exciting episodes coming up. We can say that because we've already recorded them mm. and uh, I'm excited to release them. Yeah. They're, they're really great. Mm. Just so you know. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to wait. Um, well, until next week, guys. Yeah. I'm sweating profusely, so let's... Um, yeah, just, let's did I say that out loud? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So let's uh, stop recording. Okay. See you later, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.